Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why in how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio, and I want to thank you for joining me on the Sales Influence Podcast. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Again, any feedback you provide would be greatly appreciated. So today I want to talk about a question I often get. When I say often, I mean a whole lot. And people always ask me, Victor, I'm having a hard time selling, to which I ask, why? I says, well, I can't get X person to buy Z product. I can't get X person to buy Z product. I go, well, why can't you get them to buy? Well, Victor, you know. I mean, sometimes they need to think about it. You know, sometimes it's about the money. Sometimes it's just not the right product fit. At least that's what they tell me. I don't believe it. You know, there's just so many reasons why they're not buying. And then I said, well, why do you think they're not buying? I mean, really, deep down inside, why do you think they're not buying? And I typically think, I I, I don't know, Victor. Uh, I don't know. Well, here's why you don't know, and that's what we're going to talk about today. In order to sell people in today's market, in order to sell people, all you have to do is implement one simple strategy. If you want to sell more effectively, I'm about to give you the simplest strategy to do so. This one technique will bump up your close rate. This one technique will help you close more deals. I know what you're thinking. Victor, please get to the point. Make the statement. What is it? Well, here it is. Since you've asked, all you have to do to sell more effectively in today's market is, drum roll, is to take the client's point of view. Now, let's talk about this. Take their POV, their point of view. In other words, in order to sell somebody, all you have to do is really begin to put yourself in their position. In other words, really feel what they're going through. Really try to understand why they don't want to buy. I mean, really, instead of being a seller, listen carefully, I want you to become the buyer. Instead of becoming the, being the seller, I want you to become the buyer. What do I mean by that? I want you to just pretend that if you had to buy this product, if somebody approached you to buy this product, what would be your reaction? Don't sugarcoat it. Be honest with yourself. What would be the reaction if I took your product or service right now, turned it around on you, and tried to sell it to you, would you buy it? In fact, let me make this statement. If you don't own or use your product or service, you'll never be effective at selling, or at least as effective as you can be. Because unless you are a product of the product, catch that phrase, this is an important phrase, unless you are a product of the product, you'll always be hindered in your sales ability. In other words, you'll never sell as good as you can unless you become a product of the product. This past weekend, I was doing a big event, 12,000 people at the MGM Arena in Las Vegas. And one of the things I kept hearing over and over again, and one of the things I kept restating over and over again is, in order to be successful, you have to be a product of the product. But more importantly, you have to take the customer's point of view. In other words, put yourself in their position. Put yourself in that mindset. This is such a simple strategy, but so few people practice it. You know, it's fascinating to me how we can learn about a product, right? We'll study a product, read all the materials about a product, and then we'll, you know, we'll go out there, we'll memorize some scripts, we'll learn the presentation, and then we'll try to sell this product to somebody. But then I often ask people, well, do you use it? I mean, do you use your product? And a good, you know, I'll say 50% of the time, people say, no, I don't. If they're honest, they say, no, no, I don't really. And so right there and there, you're at a disadvantage. So again, you got to be a product of the product. That's one. But I really want to focus on is I want you to think about instead of being a seller, I want you to be the buyer. And again, what are you thinking as a buyer? If somebody presented this to you for the first time, what would be your doubts? What would be your concerns? What would be your pushbacks? In other words, what would be things that you would go, you know, maybe now's not a good time. What would you push back on? And what I want you to do is write out a list of all the things that you think, if you put yourself in that position, if you take their point of view, the buyer's point of view, what what are a list of things 
that you would write out as far as you know things that would probably make me not want to buy the product. Let me give you an example. We all buy cars, right? And let's say you're a buyer now, right? You're not the seller. Let's say you're a car salesman, but right now I want you to be a buyer. What would be some of your hesitations? One would be finding the right model. Two, make sure that you know if this thing breaks down, uh, first of all, we want to make sure it doesn't break down, but if it does break down, is it covered? What type of warranty does it have? You know, should I buy now or should I buy later? You know, uh, how much are the payments going to be? Should I lease or should I buy? Or maybe I shouldn't get a new car. Maybe I should get a used car. These are all the things the buyer is thinking about. They could look at it from a family perspective. You know, you know, we have kids. Is this comfortable for all the kids that we have? You know, would this be a great car for traveling in? Will my kids be comfortable? You know, I take a kid to a lot of sports. You know, is this car big enough? Be the customer for a while. See where I'm going with this? By putting yourself in the customer's position, even as you're talking to them. If you're talking to a, a, a man who walks in, you have to ask the question, is this man single or married? If he's single, then I know that there's a certain approach I want to take with this man. If he's married, then there's an approach I want to take with him with regard to him being married. If, there are, if it's a couple in front of me, well, that's a different dynamic. Now I want to know, do they have kids? In other words, what are some of their interests? I want to understand them better. Let's take this to the technology piece. Let's say you're selling to B2B, right? And again, let's think about this. If you're selling a product, I don't know, software, hardwood, whatever it may be, firmware, to a company, let's say I'm talking to a CEO. Well, let's take the CEO point of view. What is a CEO or business owner constantly thinking about? Well, they're thinking about increasing you know, market share. They're thinking about increasing their profit. They're thinking about reducing their costs or expenditures. They're asking themselves, how can I continue to grow my business? How can I continue to scale my business? At what speed should I scale my business? What should I be doing to increase our market awareness? These are the things that a CEO is thinking about. So what I do is take that point of view, and then depending on the product or service I'm selling, I'm going to make sure that there's connective tissue. In other words, I'm going to connect everything back to what that person is concerned about. So whether you're selling B2B or B2C, it doesn't matter. This simple technique, listen to me, listen to me. By simply taking the client's point of view, you will increase your ability to close the deal. And all you need to do is take a good five or 10 minutes to really walk through it mentally even before a meeting, even before you walk into a meeting and you're going to do your presentation, ask yourself, who's in that room? Who is in that room that matters? And what are they thinking about? If it's a B to C, maybe I'm talking to a couple with kids if I'm selling that type of product. Okay, what are their couple's concerns? If it's a young couple, what are their concerns? If it's an older couple, what are their concerns? Two, di two different sets of concerns. If I'm doing a B to B type of presentation, I'm walking into a room, there's at least five people in there. Well, if it's a CEO, uh, I need to understand that mindset. If it's a chief technical officer, which that means they're worried about the technology, optimizing, staying ahead, being leading edge, you know, upgrading, you know, expanding their technology, can I answer those questions? If, I'm t if I know there's a, a chief sales officer and there's somebody who's concerned about numbers, then I know that they're worried about do they have the right people? Do they have the right team? Do they have the right tools? Are they trained? You know, what else can they do to grow their business? I now understand what they're experiencing. So the next time you go to do a presentation, whether it's one-on-one, one-on-two, or one to a group, doesn't matter. Take five to 10 minutes to simply put yourself in that position, in that mindset, and then ask yourself, as you're going through that, you know, the whole mindset, what are they thinking about? What are they thinking about? Ask yourself, am I answering these questions? Am I prepared in my presentation to answer these questions? Do this, do this simple strategy, and you will sell more effectively. Take the client's point of view. That's it for this Sales Influence Podcast. Don't forget to leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Let me know what you think. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, check out my sales training website, 
SeminarsOnSelling.com where you'll find great training videos for you or you to your team to help you grow your business. Lastly, I want to thank you for listening. This is Victor Antonio always reminding you, selling ain't hard when you know how. Take care. Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.